In this video, we're going to discuss another technique of differentiation. This is called the implicit differentiation. Let's get started. A function can be defined explicitly or implicitly by an equation. If a function is defined explicitly by an equation, then in general it is written in this form, y equal to function of x, which means that the variable y is expressed explicitly in terms of the variable x. For example, we have this equation here, y equal to in terms of x only. And then again, we have another equation here, y is equal to another expression which is written in terms of x only. In this case, we say that these equations define the functions explicitly. So this first equation defines the function f of x equal to this expression. And the second equation defines the function given by f of x equal to this expression. But it is also possible that our function is defined implicitly by an equation. For example, it's possible that our function is defined implicitly by this equation or by this equation. And we say that a function is defined implicitly by an equation if the equation is not in the form y equal to f of x. So the variable y is not expressed explicitly in terms of x. Just like in these two equations. In some equations, it is possible to solve for y as an explicit function or several functions of x. If we go back to our first uh, equation, x squared plus y squared equals 16, then we can easily solve y in terms of x in this equation. And we'll get moving the x squared to the right hand side of the equation and taking a square root of both sides, we'll get plus or minus, don't forget the plus or minus sign here, a square root of 16 minus x squared. So from this, we know that two of the functions determined by the implicit equation are f of x equal to this positive square root and g of x equal to the negative square root. And what are the graphs of these two functions? The graphs are just semicircles. So the graph of this equation is a circle centered at the origin of radius 4. So this is the graph of our x squared plus y squared equal to 16. If we take the upper half of this circle, so the upper semicircle, then this is a graph of a function. Which function? It's the function f of x equal to square root of 16 minus x squared. So this is the graph of the function f. And the lower semicircle is the graph of the function g. Now that we have written y in terms of x only, and we know these two functions here that satisfy our equation, then we can easily use our previous techniques in solving for the derivative of these two functions. However, if we're given an equation, it is not always possible to solve y in terms of x. If we go back to the second equation, which is equal to x cubed plus y cubed equal to 6xy, then it is hard to solve y in terms of x by hand. And if you can solve y in terms of x here, then you'll obtain a very complicated expression. The graph of this equation is uh, this one, which is known as the volume of Descartes. So from this curve, we can obtain graphs of three functions that will satisfy this equation. And the graphs of these three functions will look something like this. So we have this one. This is a graph of a function by vertical line test. And then next, we take this part here. Okay, so we have this one. And then next, we take this part here. Okay, so any of these functions is said to be defined implicitly by the equation x cubed plus y cubed equal to 6xy. Now, the question is, 
Is it possible to find the derivative of y with respect to x without solving y in terms of x? Fortunately, the answer is yes. And to find the derivative of y with respect to x, if your function is defined implicitly by an equation, just like this equation, then we are going to use a method called implicit differentiation. So how do we perform this uh, implicit differentiation? So here's the two-step procedure in finding the derivative of y with respect to x if your function is defined implicitly by an equation. The first step is to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x, treating y as a function of x. And if y is a function of x, just like u, a function of x in our differentiation formulas with the chain rule, then the derivative of y raised to n with respect to x will be equal to applying extended power rule or it's the power rule with the chain rule it's equal to bring down the power, subtract 1 from the power, times the derivative of the base, which is derivative of y with respect to x. And second step, we solve for the derivative y prime or dy over dx in the resulting equation of step 1. Let's show some examples. Let's find derivative of y with respect to x if x squared plus y squared equals 16. So first step, we take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. Derivative of x squared plus y squared equal to derivative with respect to x of 16. Now what is the derivative of the left hand side? It is equal to 2x. And then plus, what is the derivative of y squared with respect to x? Again, we have to treat the y as a function of x. So this is a power of a function. So we need to use extended power rule. So we bring down the power. We subtract 1 from the power. So y raised to 1 times the derivative of the base, which is y with respect to x. Equal to derivative of 16 with respect to x, which is equal to 0. Derivative of a constant is equal to 0. And now we move to the second step. The second step is to solve for y prime or dy over dx. So here we move the 2x to the right hand side of the equation and we'll get 2y dy over dx equal to negative 2x. And this will give us dy over dx equal to negative 2x over 2y which is equal to negative x over y. Therefore, the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to negative x over y. Now, what does this equation mean? This means that if we can find any function that will satisfy this, our function it is like y equal to f of x, then the derivative of that function with respect to x, it is equal to negative x over that f of x. A while ago, we found two functions that satisfy this equation. Let's look at the first function. We have like f of x, which is equal to square root of 16 minus x squared. So if y is equal to this, f of x, which is 16 minus x squared, which is equal to 16 minus x squared raised to 1 half, then the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to extended power rule. We have here bring down the power, subtract 1 from the power, and then times the derivative of the base, which is equal to negative 2x. And we can simplify this to negative x. So we cancel the 2. So we'll get here negative x over 16 minus x squared raised to 1 half. Which is the same thing as negative x over square root of 16 minus x squared. And if we look at this expression here. Since y is equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared, then the derivative of y can be written as negative x over y, 
which is consistent with our result using implicit differentiation. So what if we consider the second function that satisfies this equation, the function g of x? So the g of x is the negative of this square root. So g of x is the negative of this square root. So if y is equal to negative square root of 16 minus x squared, which is equal to the negative of this expression, then the derivative will just be the negative of this expression. And this becomes positive x. But this expression can be written as negative x over the negative of this square root. And again, since y is equal to the negative of this square root of 16 minus x squared, then we can replace this denominator by y. So our derivative again can be written as negative x over y, which is exactly the same thing as we got using implicit differentiation. So this shows that we don't really need to solve for y in terms of x to compute for the derivative of y with respect to x. Let's have another example. Suppose we want to find the equation of the tangent line to the volume of the Descartes curve, x cubed plus y cubed equal to 6xy at the point 3 comma 3. So we know already the tangent point 3 comma 3. So if we can find the slope of the tangent line, then we can easily find the equation of the tangent line. But interpretation of the derivative, it gives us the slope of the tangent line at a given point. So in this case, we first find the derivative of y with respect to x. And we're going to do that by implicit differentiation. So we have here x cubed plus y cubed equal to 6xy. Differentiating both sides with respect to x, we have here derivative with respect to x of x cubed plus y cubed is equal to derivative with respect to x of 6xy. And the derivative of the left-hand side is equal to 3x squared. And then plus derivative of y cubed, again, treat y as a function of x. You have here 3y squared derivative of the base with respect to x. And then equal to, what is this? Derivative of a product. It's a product of 6x and a function of x. Why? Because again, y is a function of x. So we have to use product rule. So using product rule, we get derivative of the first factor. We have here 6 times y plus 6x times the derivative of the second factor, which is derivative of y with respect to x. Now, we're done with step one. So we now solve y prime or dy over dx. So all we need to do here is to isolate all the terms with dy over dx in one side of our equation. So we'll get here 3y squared dy over dx minus 6x dy over dx equal to 6y minus 3x squared. And factoring out dy over dx, we'll get here 3y squared minus 6x times dy over dx equal to this expression, 6y minus 3x squared. Now, we can already get our dy over dx. And this is equal to 6y minus 3x squared all over 3y squared minus 6x. And we see a common factor 3 in the numerator and denominators. If we factor out that 3, we'll get here 2y minus x squared over 3 times y squared minus 2x. Therefore, the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 2y minus x squared over y squared minus 2x. Now, what is the slope of the tangent line at the point 3, 3? Then the slope of the tangent line is just equal to the value of the derivative at the point x, y, which is equal to 3, 3. And this is equal to just plug in these x and y values for x and y. So we'll get here 2 times 3 minus 3 squared all over 3 squared minus 2 times 3, which is equal to 6 minus 9 all over 9 minus 6, 
So that is negative 3 over 3. That is equal to negative 1. Thus, what is the equation of the tangent line? So the equation of the tangent line using point slope form of a line will get here y minus y1, which is a 3, equal to the slope, which is negative 1, x minus x1, which is also equal to 3. So this will give us y equal to negative x plus a 3, and then plus a 3, you'll get here y equals negative x plus 6. Now, if we look at the graph of this uh, volume of Descartes again, we'll see that the equation of the tangent line at this point, 3 comma 3, is indeed y equal to negative x plus 6. This confirms that our answer to this problem is correct. Thank <laughs> you.